over time, there is a consistent pattern. Kids these days, says the older generation of the new wave, a timeless jingle. There has been a fairly recent trend regarding the perceived war between millennials and older generations. Older generations label millennials as lazy, dependent, and self-serving, while millennials retaliate by calling out their so-called hypocrisy. After all, older generations too have succumbed to the compulsory, inevitable use of technology in everyday life. However, is this trend even at all recent? Things actually haven't changed much over time. It's tradition, nearly a rite of passage, for each new wave, each new generation, to be reprimanded for indulging in the new, whether it be new technology, new fashion, new music, new fads. My parents did it to me, whose parents did it to them, whose parents did it to them. If this is such a recurring pattern, why are generations labeled and numbered through time, rather than being conceptually portrayed more accurately, as a cyclical pattern, a ceaseless loop? As unique and special as each generation desires to be, they all end up being the same, with the same aspirations, same fears, same desires, same motives. Naturally, this includes the use of technology. Millennials are labeled mostly by the amount of time spent on the internet and are seemingly begrudged by their elders simply due to the fact that they have the world at their fingertips. They literally possess infinite knowledge in the palm of their hand. Older generations seem to take pride in the fact that they had to do things manually, like scour an encyclopedia for information or stick a pen through a cassette tape to reset it. This gives the illusion that millennials don't work for what they have, yet these older generations must be forgetting that their parents did the same thing to them. If baby boomers had the options we do today, they too would have taken advantage and utilized it. Who wouldn't utilize the opportunity to live a life of ease and efficiency? There's this thing in the writing world known as chat. We use chat to help us think about and study the complex genres that we encounter in the world. Chat is basically a way for us to better understand the complete systems of literate activity and apply its specific elements to our everyday lives. There are a few chat terms that we can break down to help us dissect the topic at hand. We'll only be looking at a few today. The us versus them component has always been a recurring theme in human nature. Groups tend to favor their own groups while simultaneously disliking others. Similarly, each generation is naturally biased toward their own. Depending on which generation you were born into, that subsequently shapes how you think and feel about your own, which, in turn, shapes your generational identity similar to gender identity or racial identity. As time goes on, this component is reinforced by stereotypes, which can influence others' opinions of your generation. For instance, there's a stereotype that older generations are technologically inept, or that younger generations are lazy and self-centered. The way people conceptualize an idea, such as generational differences and how they think about and talk about that idea, is what we call representation. At times, representation can correlate with reception, how an idea is taken up and used by others. As we will see, the idea of generations and how they behave is continually treated the same way throughout time. It's what we could call consistent reception. For instance, Gen Xers were once quoted by Newsweek as the generation that dropped out without ever turning on the news or tuning into the social issues around them. Sound familiar, Millennials? We will be talking to people sampled from different generations, discussing with them their views on generational differences, technology, and social media. Obviously, these individuals do not directly represent each generation as a whole, but rather serve as interesting illustrations of generational cross-sections I've noticed in my own family. In a few words, describe your own generation. Determined. The last generation that re remembers how things were. Outgoing. Um, athletic generation that grew up with uh, more than any other generation and had more opportunities than any other generation. We had rock and roll. I think our generation wasn't much different than other generations. In a few words, describe baby boomers' generation. Um, kind. Well, they're not lazy. They, they work hard. Mm. Good work ethic, but entitled. In a few words, describe Generation X. I don't want to sound rude. Kind of rude. Word clueless comes to mind. Not rude, like stubborn. Our children. 
In a few words, describe Generation Y. Um, funny, outgoing, driven, but maybe not knowing what to do, you know, um, and and just kind of find, trying to find their path. In a few words, describe Generation Z. <laughs> I think that everything's hard for them. They want everything to come easy to them, instantly, instant gratification. I would also say entitled but not as good of a work ethic. Now we're really hitting that, that uh, everybody's a winner thing. Uh, what do you think was different about your childhood compared to the other generation's childhoods? Like, in my childhood, you can grow up like looking stuff up on a computer and like on your phone. And the other generations, like, you really couldn't. A generation came of age at a time where the internet and you know, modern technology was starting to flourish and explode. Like, cause I think my childhood might have been somewhat similar to a baby boomer, only because there wasn't really a whole lot of technology. When we were younger, you know, our really our entertainment, and this is technology again, was outside. Technology. Baby boomers grew up seeing it. Millennials grew up knowing it. However, according to Tech.com, baby boomers still spend more money on technology than any other generation. There's a widely conceived notion that older people don't know how to use technology, while younger people are tech-savvy experts. Is this really true? You know, we, we try and stay current with things. Yeah. Yeah. Technology is a challenge. It's a challenge it's times, times, it's faster than we do. Uh, certainly my parents stopped learning about current affairs and different things at a certain point in their lives where, I mean, we still listen to some music even though we don't get it all. We still mm -hmm. listen to it. My father never listened to rock and roll. So I feel like we've, we've expanded a little further than, than what our parents did. But maybe to the Generation Z, maybe we have it moved on one use. Technology is seen as the defining factor of innovation and progression. Its trajectory has had a major impact on the way people of each generation in each era have used it. Technology's evolution has been mechanical and tangible, but there is an underlying social change, or lack thereof, that has accompanied it. What has been the most innovative technological invention in your lifetime? Oh, see, definitely the smartphone. Probably, like, smartphones? Say smartphones. Smartphone. <clears throat> well, the smartphone in particular. You can access the collective human knowledge from your pocket while you're just sitting there on the toilet or whatever. Do you feel like you ever struggle with some technologies? And if so, why? Sometimes with like computers, like getting them like to hook up to Wi-Fi or something like that. So not like big things. Still don't know how to, I know, I don't still don't know how to answer my cell phone sometimes, you know, because I, mean, I don't use my cell phone, you know, most of the time the battery's dead. Yeah, because I don't care. If it's something I care about, I learn it and, 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 and try to master it. But if it's something that I care less about, you can tell telephones and communication is something that I don't seem to care about. Because I don't feel that I need to communicate that often with people. And if I do, I prefer to do it face to face. I, I the only thing I've recently struggled with was I downloaded uh, Windows 10 on my laptop and I I hate watching those tutorials so I haven't and so I've struggled with it to this day I still struggle with it because I'm I just find it I just mess with it until I find what I want. I would say that there is no excuse to struggle with most technology because you can look up just about anything there is to know about that technology and master it in the course of a day if you really felt so inclined. Um, I usually do the trial and error method. I don't think so. The only time I would struggle if, if it's like a new program or something, but then I mostly just teach myself trial and error. So do you feel like technology can help or hinder your life? Well, it certainly helped my life uh, with banking and being able to 
move money seamlessly. Email uh, to, with friends. I mean, I know a lot of people don't use don't, the younger generation doesn't use email as much, but I certainly do. Maybe both. Like, it does distract me at times. I'm not going to sit, sit here and pretend it doesn't. But at the same time, it has helped in my professional life a lot. Both because it's like easy to have like all this technology like that's in my access but like when I'm with friends and stuff it's hard for them to like want to go outside or like do other things because like all they want to do is like go on Instagram or something. Oh it is what you make of it. It's, it's the bee's knees. It's, it's an instant gratification sort of thing, which is good and also dangerous because when people are getting exactly what they want, exactly when they want it, and then you cut them off, then people just lose their minds. Um, but if you manage your expectations for what uh, technology can do for you, then, you know, you're gonna have a better time. What do you typically use the internet for the most? Um, like Snapchat, like social media. Probably banking. Probably Facebook. I'm on Facebook quite a bit. Research and entertainment. Games, probably. Yeah. That's, you better have said Email games. games. Yeah. You better have said games. I'm Looking back over your life and considering how far technology has progressed, what is one thing that still just absolutely blows your mind? Definitely the smartphone. For me, it's cable television. And the ability to have unlimited or so many channels available to you with the quality with which they're delivered. Probably something like FaceTime. I have the Pizza Hut app. I think I'd have to go with the smartphone again. And if you could guess, where do you expect technology to take us next, or where do you hope it will? What's something like you'd really want to see? I would want to see travel faster than it is. I'd like it to just work better. That would be nice. Like, what if technology, like on FaceTime or like Snapchat or something, like you could smell them? I, I like the way that those smart houses are working. Mm -hmm. I think that that's neat, but I really, I, I feel like I'm, I have so much. Oh, yeah. How can it possibly get to be more? I know there's gonna be, and that should be, but, but <laughs> I just have no idea. Do you think there's a difference in the way your generation uses technology versus how other generations use technology? Yeah. Oh yeah. How? Oh, oh yeah. Uh, they use it more seamlessly. It's just, it's just, it's like breathing. You know, it's like breathing. You know, that generation. I'm envious of that that they're able to do. That. I think you can do that when you're kids. You know, on the tin can, the goddamn screen. You know? mm -hmm. I think it's, it's the, it, it all, like it, there's such a reliance upon it that that it worries me that if they didn't have it, there wouldn't be, uh, they wouldn't know how to do without it. Funny, funny cats. That's, that, I'd say that's the one thing that that bridges all generations and unites us all is a love for funny cats. Social media, a fairly recent apparatus, has acted as a catalyst for technological and social change. Instant globalized networking is arguably the pinnacle of human innovation and has allowed us to connect with old friends, family members, and people around the world in the blink of an eye. What all of this ultimately comes down to is socialization. This describes the intermingling of ideas among people, which leads to the transformation of social and cultural practices. The cultivation of generational identity arises from socialization, as do opinions formed by other generations. The internet, and social media specifically, is just one of many things that serves as a facilitator of social change. Do you use social media? Yeah. I don't think I do. No, you don't. <laughs> yes. Yes. Occasionally. What forms of social media do you use the most? I use Facebook. It'd probably be Facebook. Facebook the most. Because at the beginning it was like fun to like catch up with old friends. Uh, I'm familiar with it because yeah. it's just the easiest one for me to use. Um, for me, it's because I can be a passive user. I don't actually have to participate on Facebook because I don't really care to. 
I can just look at other people's lives, judge them however I want, um, without actually having to communicate with, with anyone. I use Snapchat the most. It's easy to like just take a picture, and, like send it to a friend, or you can like FaceTime on Snapchat and you can post stuff on your story. And there's just a lot you can do on Snapchat rather than like Instagram. What do you love most about social media? Reconnecting with like old with old friends. Just finding out things about other people. You know, my family. It's like efficient, like. If I want to hang out with someone, I could text them, like, like, hey, want to hang out, rather than, like, call them or have to, like, walk to their house or something. What do you hate most about social media? Oh, oh, I could go on and on about what I hate about social media. The ads. Oh, the fake news, definitely. <laughs> oh, gosh. Everybody's opinions, I think, including my own. I hate that social media takes up so much time. If everyone's welcome, um, the, the smartest minds of all generations to the lowest common denominator. What do you think people of other generations use social media for? Older generations use the internet mostly for uh, Facebook to share uh, images of minions from Despicable Me to uh, praise their grandchildren and younger generations mostly use it uh, to take pictures of themselves and food. I don't I don't really get it. I don't I don't bother. I know you guys are are Snapchat and Twitter. Our generation is Pinterest and Facebook. <laughs> you guys like instant gratification, so if you like Twitter or Snapchat, they're quick and done. All the older like adults or people use like Facebook and it's I guess it's easy for them to use and Snapchat and Instagram and all that is kind of confusing. I, I, I also I mean I don't know a lot about it, but I just I think too that it's it, it's because if a, a past generation is using something, the newer generation just naturally wants change and seeks something different from them, whatever, whoever them is, because they don't want to be associated with them because they're not them. So I think that's, again, a normal process of, of each generation wanting to be different than the last generation. What do you think specifically separates your generation from the other generations? <sighs> Time? No, it, no I, I, in, in my mind, I don't think so. Uh, I don't, because I, I really don't believe each generation is different. Wait, what? Jim, are you implying that there really are no differences between generations and that they naturally act the same over time because of inherent social patterns? You know, I, I look at it as really no different than, than what, what, what I was. I think that they, maybe some technology changes in that, but I still think that, that the kids were just the same as the kids, kids were when I, when, when I grew up. I don't see a generation change really between any generation. Mm. I may see some technology changes and uh, a few things here and there, but I think in general, not much difference. I say certainly technology changes, which changes some behavior, but I don't know that it changes the inner person and the inner generation and what they want and hopes and dreams are. Well, there you have it. Jim is reinforcing the point that although there's a clear progression of technology over time, people stay the same. As they age, they might forget that they too experienced the same treatment as today's generations or that their parents went through the same culture shock as well. But the same cycle of feelings and behaviors can only be attributed to the fact that people of all generations still share the same intrinsic attitudes toward technology, age, time, and life. <laughs>